Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to a completely random look at 1-2-3-D Sculpt. Now, the completely random look at series is just kind of about stuff that I found cool that is tangentially related to game development, but this isn't a review or a preview or a tutorial. This is just a, hey, look at this, this is cool, check it out kind of post. And what we're looking at today is 1-2-3-D Sculpt by Autodesk. Now, we looked at 1-2-3-D Design earlier, which is a, a 3-D uh, solid surface model available for Windows and iPad. Uh, and this couldn't be any more different. This is uh, an iPad-only product. Uh, again, it is by Autodesk, and it has the 123D name. Uh, but this is a sculptor along the lines of uh, ZBrush or Pixelogic, which we covered earlier last week, or uh, 3D Coat, um, Mudbox, etc. So, uh, three model, sorry, 3D sculpting is getting more and more common in the world of development. And what I really want to see is more tools come to the iPad. I find the iPad is a very intuitive way of working. Now, not necessarily iPad, but tablets in general, so Surface or um, Android tablets as well. But I want to see more graphic tools come to them. Personally, right now, I already love doing all my editing in uh, Photoshop on iPad, or um, I do a lot of my design work on um, iDraw, or which is now iGraphic or Graphic. Uh, which is a nice vector arts package. It's just a nice intuitive way to work and it's very portable obviously. And so today what we're looking at is 123D Sculpt and this is it. Now this is running in reflector across uh, wireless here so if there's a little bit of lag it's not 123D Sculpt it's the connection to my PC so don't don't take performance as any kind of an indication of what's going on because this thing is actually very, very smooth. Now, if you go to the App Store, you will find there are two versions, 123D Design and 123D Design, sorry, 123D Sculpt and 123D Sculpt Plus. You want Plus. The other one was abandoned. It was developed until early in the year. It's obviously the basis technology here, but this is the future version. And another big difference is the old one worked on selling you pre-configured models. This one, as far as I can tell, it's just free. There's no business model at work here. I have no idea what Autodesk gets out of this, but it's a boon to you. And the nice thing is this isn't just a toy. This is something you actually can use to at export out models that you can actually make work of. So we'll look at that a little bit later on. Now, to get started, you can either choose to completely build from scratch, or you can sculpt from a ready-made model. So we'll look at we'll look at the other two options, then we'll go back and build from scratch. Now, ready-made, you come in, you can choose a predefined shape that they've shipped with and then modify it for your use. Or we can go into ready to pose and there's fully created shapes that you can just work with it and you can pose to go from there. Now what we're going to do is build from scratch. Now when you're building from scratch, you're not building completely from scratch. You're building from a simple shape. So we got like a basic head of shape, a basic uh, body type T, a, a capsule frog and then some more complex shapes that you could take and modify so what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll work with uh, build from scratch on that uh, the head yeah the head shape now what's cool here is these ones are each um, each of these little pieces is pretty much like a bone that you can pull out of so if I grab um, a shape now such as the top guy I can just click on it and drag out and so there we just split it into symmetric across the axis. And you can just keep building out shapes using those. Now your um, typical, so if you move off the model, you can orbit the camera around. You can pinch to zoom. You can two finger orbit or so on. Now the, the, uh, the rotating camera can get a little confusing at times. Now let me undo it because it doesn't look like anything like a head anymore. But that's your basic shape that you're starting with. And you can just grab and pull to extrude out more from that shape. Now we don't really want to do that in this case because we're actually just dealing with a head like surface and a head like surface does not need, unless you're like a you know, Star Wars Twi'lek or whatever, those things coming up the back of your head, you don't generally extrude anything out of your basic head shape. So instead what we're going to do is go and switch over here to shape mode. And now we can uh, resize each of those pieces in the, in the orbit like so, as you see. So I can come down to the shoulders here, bulge them out a bit. And then once we're all done with this, we're like, we like our basic shape. So let's say that's our head. We're going to start right there. Just click the bake. And this is going to turn it into a sculptable shape. And in a second, it's going to fire up. And then we can, uh, we can work with it a little bit more. Now, I'm not going to go into any depth here. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is just to sort of show you what this guy can do. But now we're in the point where we can go ahead and we can sculpt it. And right away, let's turn on symmetry. So you can see that blue line down the middle. That's going to be anything done on the one side. It's going to be mirrored on the other. And the first thing we've got is grab. Grab is just sort of like grab and move. Now, there's these two sliders across the bottom. This one here is the, um, the size of your effect or the size of your brush. And this one on the right is the strength. You can see by the opacity of the circle being drawn, 
how much effect it will have. So let's turn it down a little bit, but make it a little bit bigger. And we're just going to grab the side of his head and pull it out a bit. You can see the end result. So if we wanted to come in here and say, pull out his eyebrows, we just sort of draw a brush line down here. Let's, let's orbit it so it's a side view. And let's just pull his face out a bit. All right, that actually is not at all what I want. So let me just quickly undo that. Now grabs for more or less making large scale edits. What we want to come in here and do is a sculpt out. Now sculpt out is also going to change the geometry. Basically we're saying, you know, grow in this area. And we're just going to go around that nose, down that nose line. Just rub it. So let's return. Make it smaller, stronger. I need to, oops, let's not do right on our model. Now I'm giving this guy, unfortunately, a double nose, bigger nose. There we go. So pull it out, give him an eyebrow line. We could also sculpt in. So now we're below the eye. We're going to make the eye socket pull it. Now you're going to see I'm munging the uh, geometry, something fierce here. I don't know why it's so bad at this, uh, but it is really bad at uh, sculpting in, but we're going to do the nose in as well. And you see the geometry is just right mixed up, but don't worry, the smooth brush will fix that. So I've got smooth now selected. I'll just come in here and smooth over that area and it heals it. No problem at all. All right, so there you can see we've quickly created some ears, an eye, a face. Now, obviously, you can spend a lot more time um, fixing this in general. Now let's flatten the side of his nose slightly so that so let's flatten his eye slightly too. Oops, went too far. Smaller, flatten that in. And you just use this combination of tools to create the underlying shape that you want. Now, I'm not doing anything really magical here, and you could spend uh, days, hours, minutes, months, whatever, creating your masterpiece. But the basic idea is you're, you're working with virtual clay. You're either uh, pulling it around or pushing it in, pushing it out, smoothing it up pinching it in or flattening it down. And that simple set of brushes is probably more than enough. Uh, that guy at the top right that I just touched, um, that box in Coast, it will automatically zoom in around your shape. Uh, you've got your undo and redo or exit back to the main menu. So now that we're done, let's go ahead and click back. So now we're back here. Now we can go ahead and texture actually. So hit color paint. And now we're with, we've got paint brushes instead. And we've got, we can go in here, more brushes, pick your, oops, pick your underlying texture you wish to use. And then let's pick our color we wish to go with. And you just draw and paint. So, if I pan this across, okay, I thought there was more to this. Soft and hard brush. Now let's give it some texture. Opacity down a little bit more. And back. And you can also go in here and do an image rub, which is to take an existing image uh, like this one. They've got some built in, or you can grab it right from uh, your own selection. So let's grab that eyeball there. Uh, say this eyeball. And move the underlying shape to match your image, not the other way around. This is actually kind of creepy. So then once you've got it where you want, you just do a rubbing, like so, and done. And so that's a quickly way of a quick and easy way of applying textures through as well. And that's kind of it. Like that, you could do simple texturing here. You can uh, apply images using the rub feature. And then one other feature here that they've got is a bone based um, posing system. Now, I don't know if I actually have any bones in this shape because I didn't use a, a compound object, but you can now go in and pose your skeleton. It's actually creating a skeleton behind the scenes, especially if we use one of the, uh, you know, bipedal or um, the ro the walker robot, etc. Then it makes a lot more sense. In the case of a head, um, unless I was doing shape keys for doing mouth animation, you're generally not going to have a lot of bones available there. And in this case, I have none, and I can't show you. Uh, but truth of the matter is, the uh, the experience is pretty much terrible, like absolutely terrible. So I don't really like their posing features and functionality. I find 
um, you know, you set bones, you set their weight influences, and then you drag and drag around to, to pivot them. But I just don't find it doesn't work well touch-wise. So uh, that part's unfortunate. But now we've gone ahead and we've, we've finished it. We've got our guy created. And here's where it actually becomes genuinely useful. Now you can publish it to their site and share it with other people like you saw when we first came in. But what we probably want to do is export it. When you're in an export, you can export via email and email it to yourself, or you can use iTunes and you can pick your file format. So OBJ or FBX, and then click, and then you're emailing it out to yourself. So you can you can take the stuff you work on here and get it over to your PC, no problem at all. And then actually, here, let me just actually go ahead and do that. So Mike is going to export this model out. Okay, don't know how long this process takes, mind you. And then we can go ahead and email it to somebody. So let's go with me. So it just sent itself as a zip. I go ahead and check my email. And here I'll pause for a second. This process isn't, you don't want to wait for my email to work. All right, so the file is now here. It is large. It's a uh, 12 or 7 megs here. Weird. It was 12 in my email. So let's just go ahead and extract this guy out and fire up trusty old Blender. Delete that guy. Let's go ahead and do an import. Now, Blender and FBX support's always a little iffy. Let's see how well it turned out. Okay. Oh, hmm. It's an object. I swore I picked FBX. All right, my bad. Let's uh, cancel that out and instead do an object import. Twenty-four makes in size, so you're not going to get the uh, most optimized mesh by any definition of the world. But there's ways around that. And here you go. There is our shape, flipped ninety degrees. But now it's it's in Blender. I could have brought the uh, texture in and worked with that as well. But oops, my keyboard is not functioning correctly. Okay, not sure what's wrong with my keyboard, uh, but there you go. That, that is an imported mesh. Now, it is huge. It's uh, 260,000 faces, but as you see, you could take your modeled shape, no problem out, bring it over, and import it into whatever your, uh, your project of sources. And if you come over here and you see, there is the texture map that we created, uh, ready to be imported. Now, I didn't bring the material in when I did the import, so you'd still have to bring the, the material in separately. Or you can bring it in as FBX, which is what I thought I exported it as, and it would all come in together. Uh, but that's it, basically. This is uh, 1 to 3D Sculpt. It is a simple sculpting program along the lines of um, Sculptress, but on the iPad. And it actually works very, very well. Uh, so it's one of those things you should probably check out. It's completely free. Again, I don't know what the catch is. As far as I can tell, there is none. Um, so check it out. If you've got an iPad, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, when you're out on the go or you're making uh, prototyping even, or modeling organic shapes. You can bring them in and retop with them, no problems at all. And you can use this for texturing or your, at least your initial pass on your texture uh, for a completely free tool. This is definitely something worth checking out. So that's uh, 123D Sculpt Plus from Autodesk. Hope you enjoyed that. See you later.